And you all thought Nintendo was going to announce a new console. Instead, they gave you an alarm clock. Well, okay, so this is obviously, I think most people realize, separate from Nintendo's video game venture. This falling more in line with their lifestyle pursuit. So things outside of gaming. We know they have their theme park, their movies, and some of their accessories. In this case, Alarmo. And today, what I wanted to do was, here, unbox it, but then also open it up and take a look at, around what's going on inside and see what Nintendo didn't tell us about their newest alarm clock. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new. Now we do know that this system is standalone, so it should have everything needed to run as you would expect. It most likely needs some sort of storage, some kind of low, uh, low power processor. It does run off of uh, USB-C, so it's not gonna pull a ton of power or anything from a a brick, which it does not come with that, by the way. It tells you right here, requires at least a 7.5 watt AC adapter, five volt, 1.5 amp. So again, not nothing really that powerful. So I'm not expecting a ton necessarily internally on this thing, um, but I am expecting something that is above average for an alarm clock as it is trying to do actually quite a bit here. So we have our typical paperwork there, a fairly lengthy USB-A to Type-C cable, and then the Alarmo itself, which, yeah, it does look strange. So this is something they want you to put next to your bed, and it's uh, certainly going to stand out. This isn't something that's going to get lost on your shelf. Uh, it's, it's very bright, kind of colorful red from Nintendo. It has the... Which I guess is kind of like an RGB light at the top that can flash and do all kinds of stuff. Big Nintendo logo on the bottom, a couple of uh, black feet here, which, yeah, I mean, it stands up pretty well. Like, it's not going anywhere when it's, when it's standing up. This does press, and then we also have, I mean, what looks like a back arrow, and then kind of reminds me of email. The bottom here, we have a recessed area where the USB-C cable is supposed to plug in. That way it sits flush when it stands up. And then on the front, we do have our LCD, which while it looks like a big circle, just for the full thing, it actually has like a little rectangle here in the middle. If I just turn that right like that at an angle, you can see a bit better. I guess since we're right here, we may as well plug it in, turn it on, and see exactly what it does. Turn, press, well, English. Have a pretty good, pretty good sound coming from it. You know, I mean, it has to be loud. It's trying to wake you up, so that would make sense. Have that for the, the back button. Uh, yeah, English is fine. Okay, next. America's going to East Coast time. Okay, there we go, time is set up, the date is set up, and I think that's it. Are we good? Okay, so you use this to front of the screen. Okay, well at this point it's asking me to, to lie down in bed, so I at least have an idea as to the quality of the screen, which, it, I mean, it does look pretty good, and it did have me use some of the motion sensing to move Mario around the screen, and we saw this kind of flashing on and off, and we have an idea of the speakers, so I, I think at this point, I'm, I'm good, at least for now. Let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what's going on. So after that one screw, I realized the entire front, they have some pretty strong clips all the way around. And they also have what looks like some tape sort of sticking right here, just to try to hold it the rest of the way. So this whole front, it's kind of a fight. Oh, and after looking at the clips when I remove the, the front of the Alarmo, it appears the way that this works for anyone who needs to open this in the future is when you remove that bottom tri-wing screw, you actually do a twist and then the front pops off. So you don't have to really break through any of the clips. And this is something, again, I realized after the fact I had taken it apart by popping the clips. So when I went to put it back together, I just lined it up and then did a twist I think uh, clockwise here, and it sat in just fine. It allowed me then to put the screw in at the bottom, which is mostly a locking mechanism. The clips are pretty aggressive, so you have to be pretty, uh, pretty serious with it. But the whole front pops off, and I mean, this is our main board here, and then the rest of this kind of just looks like the. I guess the this is the, just the speaker and mechanism behind it for. The top button, which we'll take a look at here as we have two cables. This one I assume is, uh, is I guess maybe power leading from the main board that has our USB-C port on it. And then we have just this cable here, which is most likely for data. We have some screws that are way down there. There, one here. So you need kind of a pretty thin screwdriver to get there. That top screw just held in our little buttons here. 
they just run into the, because we have this sort of upside down here. Yeah, so we have our two buttons just on the sides of the board. And then these two just sit right on top of it, just like that. Those screws out, looks like that guy actually still plugs in up here for our big old RGB looking button right there. And then the rest of it is indeed one giant speaker. Remember, it has to be pretty loud since it's supposed to wake you up. Put this backdrop down. I think it'll make it a little easier to, to see everything here with this board since this is technically the, the alarm. Like this is the size of it if it didn't need really just a speaker, I guess. I mean, I feel like even this big button at the top is kind of designed around the idea of look how much space we have since we need a big speaker. So why not make like a, a big button as well? But I mean, this is, this is pretty much Alarmo right here. Removed our metal shield here, just so we have that chip uncovered. I'll be taking a look at the, the chips that we have here as I can immediately see three main ones, but I'll look them up and we'll circle back around to this. That way here you can just get a nice shot of it and then we'll see what we have here exactly. But we, we should have like storage, obviously. We should have like a, a main processor. I don't know if people are gonna get to a position to hack this thing. I guess anything's possible. I just don't really know what the capabilities of something like this would be. But again, I'll, we'll come back around after we look some of these chips up. We do also have a CR2032 battery under that black plastic cover that I just removed. And it makes sense considering if there's like a power outage or you just unplug it and move it to another room, it would be able to save any kind of like, like system settings or anything you have set up on this board as opposed to unplugging and then basically wiping all of those out. See, we have our, what I assume to be main LCD cable here, and then it appears we just have a bunch of Phillips head screws all around this board. They have done a pretty good job reinforcing this USB-C port here with some, because it's like the plastic guide around it, uh, because it is sort of at a, I mean, if you look at it, it's at a right angle to the, to the board, so too much stress on it. Yes, it can be broken off, but you do plug like directly into it. And then it also sits in here as well to try to protect it. So there is at least a lot going into just supporting this USB-C main power port. Okay, the board does lift up. Let's see if anything on the back. Oh, we do have another chip back here. Get a nice shot of that chip right there. Very quickly, I did go through and check out these different chips that we have here. So we can, we can start with the, the main one being the CPU, the STM32H. It's not really gonna be doing much. This is a lower powered chip that is mostly set up as a microcontroller here for the clock itself. So I wouldn't expect this thing to be hacked and all of a sudden be emulating all kinds of stuff. However, we can see that it's capable of the, the resolution for the screen that they play with the different animations, the characters, and of course the detection that the clock does. So I could see this Alarmo thing actually opened up and maybe allow people to put their own custom graphics or animations, that kind of thing. That's sort of the extent that I would expect. And also, I mean, if you look at the the clock, it really doesn't have a, a, a nice controller setup, nothing like that. But maybe there's some fun potential there's some fun potential there to be had if it's opened up for more customization options. I mean, look, you do have four gigabytes of onboard storage here with that EMMC. So there should be at least a decent amount of storage that's that's free at this time. Although it also comes down to being able to access that if you're able to even open this thing up. And then with Wi-Fi, we do have that 2.4 gigahertz chip to the left that is actually underneath of that metal shield. However, the part that I think is pretty interesting is the radar sensor. This is the chip that is on the opposite side away from those main three chips that we just looked at. And this technically faces you. So it's it's right behind like the screen and that like the black glass on the front and it makes sense considering it, it is a 24 gigahertz radar sensor its job is to try to detect what's going on in the room in front of it and they have some other components around it but if you look at the main ship here the it's sc1233a uh yeah it it is its own all-in-one radar sensor so motion and distance detection without any external mcu and it can also detect angles so when you're setting up delarmo it asks what angle it's sitting at it has like its own antennas built in like this chip is actually 
pretty impressive when you look at it for what it's able to accomplish just on its own. And I assume Nintendo set it up in that spot, similar to how you might have a Wi-Fi antenna set up sort of towards the top or away from where you may be holding the device. In this case, putting it in an ad advantageous spot so that it can pretty much observe things going on right in front of that alarm clock. And based on their Ask a Developer that they had, I am curious if they have other plans for using radar technology like this because it sounds like Alarmo also played into the idea of them just doing research and development with technology like this. So who knows, maybe in the future they have something they build off of for their next platform as an accessory. Think of like a, the balance board they did with the Wii or Ring Fit Adventure they did with the, the Switch recently. You never know what plans Nintendo may come up with where they decide they need to know what's happening in the room as you're playing a game using radar. But that's kind of it. I mean, the board itself doesn't need to be much for the limited functionality that it has. It's just, it is funny because you see something like that and then you picture how big you would assume the brain or the motherboard to be with all the chips and maybe a bit larger. This is legitimately the size of like the front of the Alarmo. And then obviously in terms of thickness, uh, yeah, much, much thinner, but that's all it really needs in order to run this. And then coming back to our LCD, it does have this plastic piece behind it, which should be like thicker, this black, these black piece here should be pretty thick plastic. And that just adds a, or acts as support so that it, if you tap on the front too much or it tries to bend or flex, this will be there to sort of stop it. So let's take this part off. All right, with that off, we have a look at the LCD panel itself, which doesn't really make sense, I feel like, to remove it since I feel like it is sealed. So I'm not gonna risk trying to remove this and damaging the LCD screen, but I can at least give you a shot of any kind of model number or anything on the back of this LCD. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Nintendo's Alarmo, which Nintendo spin on an alarm clock, yes, but them leveraging things like radar technology in order to track your movement and sleep, while it sounds kind of strange technically since your alarm clock is watching you. It is at least something unique from Nintendo in this space. $100, that's up to you if it's worth it. I will tell you there is uh, some interesting technology going on in here and it's not your typical basic alarm clock, which I think we could already tell based on the things they've shown us and sort of the functionality they've presented here. But that at least gave us a look inside of it here with this teardown. Let me know what you guys think about Alarmo, if you picked one up or your overall thoughts after at least seeing the reveal. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.